learning objectives include serological methods for microbial identification. As I mentioned earlier, that there are various methods or methodologies available for microbial identification. Serological methods uh, could be used to identify microorganisms. The basis for serological identification is antigen-antibody interactions. Let me just tell you briefly about antibody production because uh, this is a new topic for you. Antigen is any substance that when injected into, into a body, into an animal or a human body, it induces antibody production. For example, here, let's say in this syringe here, we have a bacterium. We kill that bacterium so that it does not cause infection in this rabbit. But if we inject this bacterium into the rabbit and wait for one week or two weeks and take the blood and collect serum out of the blood, that blood would contain antibodies against this organism that we injected. And later on, if we mix the serum containing this antibody with this bacterium, we will see a visible clumping. Like you may have noticed or may have seen when you go for blood transfusion, they take your blood and then the person matches the blood with the recipient and the donor blood are cross-matched with each other. And that uh, reaction is, is typically an antigen-antibody uh, reaction or interaction. Similarly, here, the same technique where we combine an antigen with the antibody and see a visible clumping, we can use this method for microbial identification. As I mentioned, that in the body, there are lymphocytes. When they see the antigen, the antigen that we injected here, it would ultimately reach this cell. And this cell would be stimulated and then would start making antibodies. This is an antibody molecule. It's a Y-shaped structure. It's a four-chain molecule, but we're not going into that detail because obviously uh, there is another course, immunology, that you might study uh, in your this degree program. Antibodies has a property. This part of the, the antibody is called FAB portion, F-A-B. It's a fragment antigen binding. So this part would bind to the antigen. Now, let's see what happens when we combine bacterium. Let's say this is a bacterium here, and on the surface, it has different molecules with which these antibodies can interact, can bind, or can make bonds. So that typically we would call antigen-antibody interaction. Now, antibodies are soluble products. They are produced by lymphocytes in the body, and their secretions or excretions of uh, technically secretions of lymphocytes. And they're fluid-like. So we would call them as antibodies as soluble. So antibodies are always soluble. Now, if antibody is combined with a particulate matter, which is a big particle like bacteria, like RBCs, this kind of interaction, antigen-antibody interaction is called agglutination. So in other words, agglutination basically is when we combine antibodies with some solid antigen, with some particulate antigen like RBCs, like big bacterium. In another lecture, we will study another form of serological methods, what we call precipitation reactions. And precipitation reactions are slightly different. We will describe that later. But in this lecture, focus on agglutination. Here you could see that a bacterium, when mixed with the antibodies, it produces these, you could see these white flakes here, right? And this is a negative sample where the antibody was mixed with another microorganism which was not related to those antibodies. So when antigen and antibodies are specific to each other, we would see clumping uh, in the form of these big, big particles here. And this is a typically uh, positive agglutination, uh, positive uh, reaction. Or test. Here is a video clip. Uh, it'll make things more clear. And always remember that all these videos have been taken from YouTube. So we must thank YouTube for providing us these education clips. Agglutination assays have been used for decades as a simple method to detect antigenic substances in biological samples. The purpose of this video is to explain how this method works in practice and to expose its limitations. 
The agglutination assay uses tiny particles, most often latex beads. The beads are coated with a specific antibody against the antigen that you would like to detect. The test is usually performed on a card or glass or plastic slide, often one with a black surface. First, you add a suspension of the coated latex beads to each of the three encircled areas on the slide. Note that the suspension is concentrated enough to produce a milky appearance on the background. Now you add a few drops of the unknown sample that you're interested in testing, but you will also need to use one circled area for a negative control solution that contains no antigen and another for a positive control solution that contains the antigen of interest. Next, the slide is gently rocked or swirled to mix the beads with the test solutions. And the samples containing the antigen of interest will begin to agglutinate the beads. This will produce the appearance of visible clumps and the solution itself will turn from milky in appearance to clear and transparent. This transition should occur in the circle with the positive control. If the antigen is present in the unknown sample, then it will form clumps. The negative control circle should remain unclumped and opaque. Recall that the latex beads are coated with a specific antibody so that each bead can bind to numerous antigens. For agglutination to work, the antigen of interest must also be able to bind to multiple beads. Therefore, in this assay, antigens that can be detected are limited to large macromolecules that have repetitive antigenic domains. Molecules like microbial capsules, flagella, or lipopolysaccharides. One long repeating antigen molecule can then attach to several beads causing them to clump together or agglutinate. So even very tiny quantities of antigens that have lots of repeating antigenic domains can cause visible clumps to form and be detected by this test. This is the basis of the test. Finally, here are some examples of agglutination assays that are used in clinical practice. In summary, Agglutination is one of serological methods that could be employed for bacterial or microbial identification. 